Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome again to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by Dr. John Bloom, and we're going to be discussing the Shroud of Turin. John, it's good to have you here today. It's great to be here. So, I know you're you're a uh, professor of physics at Biola University. I know you have some other educational credentials. Kind of tell me a little bit about your education background, if you will. Yeah, for this topic, it's probably the ancient Near Eastern studies. I got a doctorate in that as well, which includes archaeology, and I've done theology. So, so yeah, it's physics, but you know, a bunch of other things in there as well. So. That sounds pretty interesting. So Shroud of Turin, uh, just to kind of get our audience up to speed, what is the Shroud of Turin and why does this have any relevance to Christianity? Well, it's a piece of linen, 14 feet long, three and a half feet wide, that claims to be the burial shroud or cloth uh, for Jesus. And um, it has this incredible image on it. Uh, probably everybody's seen pictures of this, of uh of a, of a man who's been very severely beaten and flogged and then crucified. And there's even evidence of like a crown of thorn on his head. So um, it's, it's pretty spectacular in that regard in terms of what the image seems to be showing. So th this sounds like pretty potent evidence for the truth of Christianity. If this is indeed Jer Jesus' burial cloth, I mean, everybody knows that Jesus was crucified. So what evidence is this that this might have been connected with Jesus? And are there other cloths like this that have images like this? Or is this a unique thing? Oh, that's, that's a good point. Um, well, let me give you the evidence for it, first of all. Um, and one of the things that's fascinating to me is that the, the nail wounds in the body are consistent with how we know people were crucified back in Roman times. Uh, particularly the, the nails were, were in the, here in the wrist, not in the palm of the hand as is so often portrayed in, in pictures. So, so that's an aspect of uh, historicity that's right about this thing. That knowledge was lost by medieval times. How exactly was a body hung on a cross? Mm -hmm. so, so that's pretty spectacular. Um, in addition to the image of the body, there's images of flowers on the cloth as well that are um, flowers from the area of Judea that bloom in the spring. So it's like, it's, so it's not just a body image, there's these flower images there that are well. And again, the weave of the cloth and there's pollen from Judea and limestone from Judea. So there's a number of aspects to it. Uh, it appears to be real blood. Some people have said maybe it's not human blood. So those are all the things that are pretty significant in, it, in its favor, I guess one could say. So, so uh, this sounds like it may not be a unique claim. I mean, is there evidence against this being? I, I recall hearing at some point that carbon-14 dating put that about seven, 800 years ago. What, is there evidence against this being the burial cloth of Jesus? Yeah, that, that's probably the major one for it. Um, in 1988, they did carbon dating, and it came up with about a 1300 AD date for the cloth, um, which, again, is about the time it was first shows up in France. So, so that's probably the major evidence that you'll see people give against it. Um, another evidence is just his features in the anatomy uh, he seems to be too tall. The person is too tall for the average Jewish person around, you know, AD 30. So, so there's some features there. Um, again, responses to it are, well, carbon-14 subject to contamination. Um, in a recent article, I just, I just came across that um, a guy in Italy, a scientist in Italy, did some X-ray dating. It's a non-destructive technique where you measure how much the, the linen has oxidized over time. Okay. And, and uh, that method is compatible with it being 2,000 years old and not a medieval cloth. So, so again, that's what makes this thing so interesting is how this image ever get formed and then 
it, could it possibly be legitimate? And then what do you do with the carbon-14 dating? Of course, other, other things that people say with the carbon-14 is that the shroud has been mended and repaired. So, so is what they're dating um, part of the original cloth you know, from 2,000 years ago? So, so lots of responses to that. Um, so what is your take if this turns out to or it kind of sounds like there's a good evidence for it being the burial cloth uh if it turns out for or against how do, how does that impact your confidence in the truth of christianity does this weigh in one way or the other for you yeah um let, let me just mention one more thing that's kind of against it the the gospel of john where peter and john run to the tomb and look inside john specifically mentions the burial clause Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem to fit the description of a single piece, mm. you know, wrapped over him. And John says that he was, the, the women laid him with spices and he had, a, there was a head covering that's fairly typical. So one piece of cloth showing everything with no spices kind of goes against the biblical account. Gotcha. Um, but, but yeah, does this affect the truth of Christianity? Um, I, I don't think it does. Um, if, if it's genuine, and you kind of mentioned this at the beginning, if it's genuine, it proves that Jesus died by crucifixion. Well, well, just about everybody grants that, you know. <laughs> so good. Right. We've got evidence that he died by crucifixion. Um, does it prove that he raised from the dead? Um I, I don't think it directly speaks to that. You know, how the image got there is is interesting, but I don't see that proving the resurrection in any way. So well, thanks, John. I really appreciate your comments. You know, the Shroud of Turin has been discussed as evidence for the truth of Christianity for a long time. And it really does seem like there's good evidence to indicate this might actually be the burial cloth of Jesus. But what it would ultimately show is that Jesus was actually crucified, and most people seem to agree on that anyway. Uh, but it is something that we need to be careful does not distract us so that we end up worshiping the relic rather than the person of Jesus Christ. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org. John Bloom's one of our visiting scholars. Search for John Bloom. That's J-O-H-N-B-L-O-O-M. You'll get links to a number of other articles he's produced, uh, some resources that he's developed, and ways that help encourage you to be confident of the truth of Christianity so you can go share it with others.